we have now looked at two components of a state variable compensator, the state feedback and reference feed forward. In this video, we look at the third and last component, the state observer. The full state variable compensator is shown in this diagram. The plant is given by this block with the input U and output Y. We have already looked at the state feedback and reference feed forward. The state feedback requires the system states, but the states of a real world system are not known to us. The task of the state observer is to reconstruct the states as accurately as possible given the information available to us. This information include the plant input, the plant output Y, and the plant model described by the system matrices A, B, C, and D. The reconstructed or estimated states are called X hat. The structure that we choose for the observer is shown in this block diagram where we assume that the direct transmission term of the plant D is equal to zero. The inputs to the observer are the plant input U and the plant output Y, and the output of the observer is the estimated states X hat. The observer can be thought of as the combination of two mechanisms. Firstly, the response of the plant to the input is simulated by using the plant model, which is done in this part of the observer. U is the plant input, the estimated states x hat are the states of the simulated plant, y hat is the output of the simulated plant, and the system matrices A, B, and C come from the plant model. Only a simulation of the plant, however, would not accurately reconstruct the states, since any modeling errors or disturbances that the plant experience will cause the behavior of the simulated plant to deviate from that of the actual plant. To minimize this deviation, the second mechanism compares the simulated output with the actual output, and the difference is multiplied with the observer gain m, which is a column vector. The result is added to x hat dot and is supposed to correct any errors in the estimated states. If the difference between the simulated and actual outputs is small, this corrective action will be small. But if the difference between the simulated and actual outputs is large, this corrective action will be large. The question we now address is how to design the observer gain M. We want to find an observer gain such that the simulation mechanism and the correction mechanism work together well to minimize the difference between the observer states and the plant states. We do this by describing the dynamics of the observer in terms of M, and we then design M such that the observer has some required dynamics. We start this process by writing down the equations describing the observer from the block diagram. In equation 1, x hat dot is equal to a times x hat plus b times u plus m times y minus y hat. And in equation 2, y hat is equal to c times x hat. Equations 1 and 2 from the previous page are rewritten here. We want the estimated states to be as close as possible to the plant states and to this end we define the difference between them or the state error as x tilde equal to the plant states x minus the estimated states x hat. Our goal is to describe the dynamics of the state error or informally how quickly the state error goes to zero. To do this we first take the derivative of the state error which is equal to x dot minus x hat dot. We then substitute ax plus bu for x dot from the state equation of the plant model and the right hand side of equation 1 for x hat dot. In the next line we substitute cx for y from the output equation of the plant model and the right hand side of equation 2 for x hat and then gather the terms containing A and the terms containing M. 
we now recognize x minus x hat to be the state error x tilde and we can write this equation in terms of x tilde only. After taking out the common factor x tilde we get x tilde dot is equal to a minus mc times x tilde. This equation is a standard state equation with states x tilde and new a matrix a minus mc. We can therefore calculate the poles of the observer by setting up the characteristic equation of the observer as the determinant of SI minus the new A matrix equal to zero and solving for S. Remember that these poles describe the dynamics of the state error or the difference between the estimated and actual states. We can now design the observer gain M such that the observer poles are in desired locations. To illustrate these concepts, let's work through an example. We use the same hanging pendulum model as previously with the state variable model of the plant and given by these equations. We can now describe the observer dynamics by calculating the observer characteristic polynomial in terms of the observer gain M. The characteristic polynomial is given by the determinant of SI minus A plus M times C which results in the determinant of this matrix. After calculating the determinant, we obtain this polynomial where the coefficients are written in terms of the elements of the observer gain vector M. We describe the desired observer dynamics by specifying the observer poles. In this example, we choose both observer poles to lie at minus 20. We can now calculate the desired characteristic polynomial as the product of S minus each pole, which results in this polynomial. We now compare the coefficients of the observer characteristic polynomial with that of the desired observer characteristic polynomial and we get M1 equal to 40 and 9.81 plus M2 equal to 400. The observer gain vector M is therefore given by 40 and 390.19. In this example, it is possible to place the observer poles in any desired location. We will address the question for which systems we can place the observer poles anywhere at a later stage. Also note that the design of the observer gain follows a very similar process to the design of the state feedback gain. We will exploit this fact at a later stage.